In this video, let's introduce a new class of reaction in organic chemistry we haven't talked about before, and these are elimination reactions. And I'd say that elimination reactions are one of the big four classes of reactions that you'll learn in, generally learn in first semester organic chemistry, along with acid-base reactions, substitutions, and addition reactions. So between these four reactions, you'll see that they cover the bulk of the freight in the terms of the reactions you're going to learn in, in first semester. But before we can kind of go into why these reactions happen and, and how these reactions happen, I think the most important question to really ask yourself in, in each case is what happens? And by what happens, we're really going to focus on the bonds that forms and the bonds that break. So being able to look at each of these reactions and, and being able to tell, okay, what happens in this reaction? What bonds form? What bonds break? And you're going to see that there's definitely patterns in how these reactions work and not only patterns for elimination reactions but the patterns for acid base substitution addition reactions and other reactions that that carry through for all these different classes of reactions so as an exercise before we go into further detail why don't you just press pause on this video and try and work through the bonds that form and the bonds that break and when you're ready press play and we'll go through it Okay, let's uh, clear up some space here uh, and then we can go through the bonds that form the bonds that break in this elimination reaction. So before uh, going into any more detail, it's usually helpful to number the carbons. I find it's usually helpful to number the carbons, first of all. And the second thing that's really helpful to do is to draw in the implicit or hidden hydrogens. Uh, and Or, you know, you can draw the carbons in too. I, I've drawn in two of those carbons. but the hydrogens really help to keep track of, of, of what's happening in a reaction because it's easy to forget that they're there. Uh, so there's three hydrogens on carbon one and carbon three and there's one hydrogen on carbon two. Okay, so now that we've seen this, we can really compare what is different about say carbon one on the reaction on the left and carbon one uh, and the molecule on the right. So molecule on the left, molecule on the right. Carbon one has clearly broken off a hydrogen. We broke a carbon to hydrogen bond here. So that is different. And what else is different about carbon one comparing the molecule on the left and the molecule on the right? Well, we formed a new pi bond, right? Between carbon one and carbon two. So that's new. Okay, so that covers carbon one. Let's look at carbon two. What's different about carbon two? Well, carbon two has a hydrogen on the left and a hydrogen on the right, so that hasn't changed, but Carbon two has broken a chlorine. It has a chlorine here and now it no longer has a chlorine. So we've broken carbon two to chlorine. So that seems to cover everything that happens for carbon two. But it's not everything that happens in the reaction actually because we have uh, an OH minus over our arrow and it's going from OH minus to H2O. So we formed an HO bond. So we formed an HO bond. And of course, we've also got ionic bonds between NaOH and NaCl. And we're not going to cover those here. Those, those aren't really crucial for us. Just that the Cl minus ends up being paired up with Na plus. So we're going to balance our charges here. But this is the key pattern for, for what happens in this reaction. Forming a carbon-carbon pi bond, breaking carbon one to hydrogen, breaking carbon two to chlorine. Okay. All right, let's look at this reaction here. So molecule down here where we're adding water and we end up with this product on the right. And again, we can number our carbons and, and it's not necessarily important to number everything. And it's, again, this is not official IUPAC numbering. This is keep track of things numbering. And just to make sure that we have everything placed properly, we'll put the numbers in and then let's compare, let's draw in the hidden hydrogens, at least in the cases where things seem like they've changed. So carbon one, the CH3 hasn't changed, but uh, let's look at carbon one. What's different about carbon one comparing a molecule on the left and a molecule on the right? Well, carbon one, we clearly broke carbon one to chlorine, and we clearly formed a bond between carbon one and carbon two. So there's a pi bond here. Okay, and what about carbon two? Well, carbon two, we clearly broke we have two hydrogens on carbon two, and now we have one. So we clearly broke carbon two to hydrogen. So that has broken off. Okay, 
And again, we've started off with water and now we have H3O plus. So if you draw that out, it looks like this, H3O plus, and we have a lone pair and the Cl minus is gonna balance that out. So we formed an OH bond as well, so H bond. So, so if you compare these two reactions, these two reactions, uh, we have this essential pattern here, which is very similar. Notice how we're forming carbon, carbon pi, we're breaking carbon hydrogen and carbon chlorine. And you know, I could have had a bromine or we could have had iodine or other good leaving groups there. The, the fact that we're both using chlorine in both these examples is not so important. And we're also forming carbon, carbon pi, we're breaking carbon chlorine and carbon hydrogen. So in this reaction, the elimination reaction, we're always gonna follow this pattern. So always this pattern. We're always gonna form a carbon-carbon pi bond. We're always gonna break a carbon, sort of a carbon to leaving group. So we're gonna form carbon-carbon pi. We're gonna break carbon hydrogen and we're always gonna break carbon to leaving group. And in this case, it's chlorine, which is our leaving group. So once you can recognize this pattern, you can see that it's actually not gonna change things very much in this reaction. For example, in the bottom, if I start adding weird things onto my molecule. So if I added a, a, a propyl chain here and, and maybe like a phenyl group, we're not gonna change the patterns of bonds that form and the bonds that break. This stays exactly the same. And this is the nice thing about looking at these patterns and recognizing patterns is that if you can just focus on the molecules or the atoms that are involved in the reaction, then you can ignore, you can ignore all the rest of the molecule which isn't a part of that reaction. So that's the key lesson when just looking at uh, the key pattern for the elimination reaction which we're talking about here. And in future videos, we'll go into more detail on some of the things we've learned about elimination reactions and some of the other sort of secondary patterns of elimination reactions.